man, is this Jennifer Pepperman, like, turn the entire division around? And uh, the answer is no. Jennifer Pepperman is Mercedes' writer. So all of Mercedes' promos are written by Jennifer Pepperman. I don't think Jennifer has written one word for Britt Baker. As far as, like, Tony Storm and Mariah May, like, a lot of that is is uh, RJ City. He's doing uh, most of uh, uh, Tony's stuff. So you can't just credit one person. There's got to be a happy medium between AEW's match, 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 match. You, you never have time for to do five and a half hours. For five and a half hours. And this, where it's match, nap. Match, nap. Both of these companies are doing this wrong. Yes. I did not rate the women's ladder match. I was a coward. And I'm fine with that. They missed so many spots. The announcers are just, they're going out of their way to convince you this was one of the all-time great ladder matches in history. They're telling, you know, give the women a standing ovation. They did so great. And I'm just thinking, that match was an atrocity. On a personal level, I absolutely hated this match. It was, I thought it was terrible. I can also acknowledge the people of this place were going absolutely crazy, and they'll never forget it, and Tiffany looked like a big star in winning. So it accomplished its goal. I'm sure a lot of people thought Braun was going to win this match. <laughs> like everyone on earth? Yeah. And this was the most Vince McMahon booking I've ever seen. It's like, we can't give the guy too much too soon. You just can't. And I hate that word, can't, because you can do anything. So it starts out with, tonight, Yeah. I officially announce my retirement from WWE. Yes. Which then morphed into, I will do Royal Rumble, Elimination Chamber, and WrestleMania. Which then morphed into, actually, I'm going to do all of 2025. Yes. One of the many, 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 many long downtime periods was filled with clips from the WrestleMania documentary, where I will paraphrase what The Rock said. I fucked the whole thing up, but then I'm the one who made it better, so I actually got all the credit. I started off bored, then I was, like, insulted. And I can imagine taking 60 minutes out of your day to watch the rest of this crappy documentary. This was bad. And the ref counts one, and the ref counts two. Damien does not move a muscle, and the ref just stops counting. Yeah, I don't know if he got knocked out or yeah, what. Yeah, that was not good. The, the money in the bank for 2024 is done, at least on the men's side. Drew won it, cashed it in, lost, it's over. Every single interaction these two have i sympathize with drew mcintyre punk comes off like a total asshole what did they give solo in this match even though he got the pin what did they give him where you think my god he might actually beat cody the only thing they gave is the idea in your mind that well if he shows up with jacob fat too maybe they can fuck the guy you don't believe he can beat him i just watched the show and what wasn't feeling it at all it was just there. Yeah. So. I liked it a little more than that. The show was much better than Money in the Bank. Yeah. It is incredible how much easier the show is to watch when it's two and a half hours and it's mostly wrestling as opposed to three and a half hours and mostly not wrestling. Remember the dumb guy with the pizza gimmick? The, yes. the indie goof. Yes. yes uh, he had 15 minutes of fame. At one point, Obafemi took uh, Wesley, oh, much yes. like a pizza, yeah. and tossed him up in the air. Yes. I believe they did more flips in this match than Ricochet did in his entire WWE run. I'm not sure they did anything that was not a flip. It was all very like athletically impressive, but it was like soulless. It was like, watching robots. Actually, there was definitely soul to it. Because yeah, her name was Soul. Soul Ruka. Yeah. When I hear you guys mention Soul Ruka... I don't know what I had in my head, but it wasn't a tall, blonde server girl. I don't know what to tell you. That's what she is. Uh, Sorry to disappoint uh, you. I mean, this was Cirque du Soleil WWE. I mean, it was just two great athletes doing a heavily choreographed performance, pretending to do pro wrestling. I mean, I guess it was a wrestling match. I mean, it was in a wrestling ring on a wrestling show. But I mean, it was so choreographed. What, what, what is this? What is this? This was not like a wrestling match. It was it was no. a performance. It, it was a total there was it, nothing else like it on the show either. It was a tumbling exhibition. The the Lola Vice Roxanne match was fucking great. So don't say it's the women. No. So which one of these guys is the virgin and which one's the fornicator? Wrong team. Wrong team, brother. Say what? 
Neither of these Neither men... are virgins or fornicators. Well, we don't know that. But they were also in Chase U, yes? No. Was it Ridge Holland that did the Stratisfaction? That was Duke. Okay. So Ridge Holland was not in the country. Uh, okay. See how confused I am? Match was awesome. It was a great main event. I was very surprised to see Ethan Page win the title. So help me God this actually happened. I typed Joe Hendry's name, and he appeared. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah, that works too, apparently. Let's do this unnecessary censorship. Austin 316 says I just f***ed your ass. That was terrible. <laughs> Horrible. Brian, would you read this for me again this week? Did you send it to me? Yep. Okay. Granny likes me to read her reports now. Sounds Did you like get it? it? <laughs> Just waiting. <laughs> You know, next week you could send it a little earlier, maybe. Yeah, I didn't know. Oh, no. It said it, send it. Well, I just got something, but it wasn't that. What was it? It was just a random email. All it says is drafts empty. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, my God. <laughs> Let's try this. No, this won't work. Oh, shoot. <laughs> We're not in a hurry. That fan working. white noise is really soothing. It is. I'm about to fall asleep. <laughs> Let's see. I don't... How would I do that? I can't even... Oh, wait a minute. Let's see. On the a drafts, it says, Brian Alvarez, no subject. Okay, yeah. So that's the one you haven't sent to me yet. It It, it isn't coming up. It's in drafts. How about you just read it? I, if I can find it now... <laughs> well, we know it's in drafts. No, it's not. Speaking of drafts, just said it was. Fan. Nice. <sighs> Good thing we we uh, rehearsed this. I'm actually starting to really sweat. <laughs> Perhaps we should move on to challenge. <laughs> <laughs> is there is there anything we can talk about, Granny? I do something wrong every week. So Will Ospreay comes out here to open Dynamite. So Will's story is that neither WWE nor AEW really wanted MJF that bad, and he had to take AEW's lowball offer. You know, uh, Tony Khan gave MJF an incredible amount of money to return. He came back, but it was never like he came groveling back or anything like that. Well, that's what Ospreay is That's saying. Ospreay's story. That's Ospreay's story, yes. Yeah. yeah. But that's like a lying baby face is what Basically, that is. That is made for next week on television, MJF versus Will Ospreay for the international title. My uh, theory is that MJF is beating Will Ospreay for the title, and then at Wembley, Will Ospreay gets his rematch, and that's his big Wembley title win, because he's not going for the world title. That's clear. If he goes to Wembley and loses to MJF, because that's kind of Will Ospreay's thing, is repeated failure before winning the big one, yeah. Tony's going to need to put his foot down on these guys making their own stories. Because Will going to Wembley in front of 40,000 and losing to MJF is a bad idea. Brian Danielson, Hangman Page, the Owen Hart Tournament Finals, and it's bloody great! Just a great, great wrestling match. Why would Hangman be out months and months and months, make a big surprise return, only to lose in the Owen? It doesn't make any sense. I said it from day one, Hangman should not be in the Owen. Tony has allowed Brian Danielson... To do what Brian Danielson wants to do. And he should have put the brakes on him a long time ago. Danielson's doing interviews about how he doesn't want to be the world champion. As he's in a tournament for a world championship match. He never wins titles. All he does is go in there and have great matches and put people over. They should have booked Brian better. And they should not have put Hangman in the tournament. If he would have done those two things... People would have no problem with Brian Danielson versus Swerve at Wembley. So, yeah, next week they're doing Swerve and Okada. And MGF and Will Ospreay. And MGF and Will Ospreay. This Ospre is a pay-per-view card. Well, they're trying to uh, boost the numbers here for the They do have a deal. Final days negotiate. of negotiations. Yes, yes, yes. But this feels like the hottest program in the company right now. Mercedes is light years better as a heel than as a babyface. Britt is a great babyface. 
And this is electricity. And they've done nothing. Mariah skips right off that belt, grabs it, and smacks Tony right in the face. And this place loses their mind. They go completely insane for this. Much like uh, people saw Chad Gable backstage after the Wyatt's attack and thought he's been shot. This looked like a gunshot wound right here. Right into her brain. She came off like a completely savage killer and an ultimate megastar. That ruled so hard. You know, people are now like, oh, see, it's one of the all-time great angles. And I was like, the angle itself hasn't been that great, but this was great. Man, is this Jennifer Pepperman, like, turned the entire division around? And uh, the answer is no. Jennifer Pepperman is Mercedes' writer. So all of Mercedes' promos are written by Jennifer Pepperman. I don't think Jennifer has written one word for Britt Baker. As far as, like, Tony Storm and Mariah May, like, a lot of that is is uh, RJ City. He's doing uh, most of uh, uh, Tony's stuff. You know, there's input from other people, but he's he's very much involved in that. And, you know, the Willow Nightingale feud with Mercedes, uh, a lot of that was Will Washington. He's He's been doing a lot as well. So you can't just credit one person. There's a lot of people involved. They're fucking with me now. That's what this is. It's like, I kept being told, just wait till the pay-per-view. Just wait till the pay-per-view. You're mad about Javon? Just wait till the pay-per-view. I waited till the fucking pay-per-view, and he got pinned. Well, you know, we'll see. Yeah, check out Tuesday. I fucking tune in Tuesday. They set up a tag team main event with all four of them. Then they beat his ass, and he's not even in the match. Hey, you're going to get so mad at me, but I'm off Twitter now, so who gives a fuck? As an actual wrestling match, this was so much better than that Kalani Jordan match mm. because so much more of this, like this wasn't just a choreographed gymnastics routine. It was like they put together a match. God damn, this Joe Henry was so over. Oh, yeah. He was more over than Trick. Nothing against TNA. Like you review him every week. Yeah. My good buddy Lance works there. Mm. But, I mean, let's be honest. No one's watching the show. Right. It does like a few hundred thousand viewers every week. Yet, these TNA guys coming into NXT, this NXT crowd, fuck, it doesn't matter who you are. Somebody could come in from WOW. They're like, <laughs> oh my fucking God, the farmer's daughter's here! Like, they're so excited. Yeah. Like, Joe Hendry comes in, and it's just like, they're going nuts! But anyway, yeah, good show, two good shows this week. So if you have a chance to watch both of them, check them out.